because we have an opportunity to make our phone line a lifeline to take uh, what the Lord has given us and just this technology and using it for the good. And so with that being said, I just want you to make sure that you stop, take some time to, you know, to take somebody and call somebody and let them know that the Lord is on the throne and let them know that God has a word for them today. And uh, I do believe today that you are going to be blessed, of course, by the word and not because... uh, uh, that I'm saying it, but because the word works, regardless to who's saying it or using it or whatever, the word works. So get on the phone, call somebody, and text or text somebody, and let them know that we're on the line. And all this week we'll be talking about what to do in the meantime. What to do in the meantime. I started this uh, on yesterday, actually Sunday. I started the uh, message, this, this series for the week, what to do in the meantime, because we all have a meantime. The meantime is a time of transition. And uh, so I'm excited about really sharing that with you uh, today. Well, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you right now, God, for all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Father, for uh, just being faithful. Thank you for just making ways out of no ways. Thank you, Father, for just opening doors that no man can close. And, God, we thank you for closing doors that no man can open. We thank you right now, Father, uh, just for... The fact that you have given us this great opportunity and ability to be able to minister, to to minister life to each other, to minister hope to each other. And uh, so I'm excited, Father, just for this opportunity, and I ask that you would just help us to just be able to uh, just to share this word and share this word in such a way that somebody's life will be turned around, that somebody's life will be changed. And uh, I'm excited, Father. I'm excited for this opportunity to minister to your people. In Jesus' name, we give you glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I'm excited today, uh, and like I said, I started on this yesterday, uh, what to do in the meantime, what to do in the meantime, because we all have a meantime, and we all have a time of 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 of, of transition. Now, I'm, I know when we start talking about transition, many times people think about problems, you know, because some of us don't like change, you know. I tell them all the time, I love how Joyce Meyer says, she said, I, lo- I love change when I'm the one making the changes, <laughs> You know, and I guess that's how I am. I love change when I'm the one making the changes, when I'm the one in control of everything. Of course, I love change on those situations. So, you know, I love how she says, I'm, I love change when I'm making the changes, when I'm in control, when I'm on, when I'm, I'm leading things, when I know it's about to happen. And so many times when we are in transition is a time of change. Transition is a time of change. And so when I say the meantime, that's what I'm talking about, in a time of change, in a time of transition, regardless of if that transition is a problem or, or it's not a, a, a troubling time, whatever it is, it's a time of change, a time of where we shift and from one place to another, where we where we change um, from one position to another. It could be a new job. It could be moving to a new town. It could be a change of relationship. It could be um, of, 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 of something like sickness in your body, or it could be just change as far as not even sickness, but trying to be healthier. That's a change. You know, trying to trying to live healthier. Whatever it is, guess what? Change requires change. You know, you can't change without changing. It, re- it requires a repositioning, a transition, a look, a shift. Something has to happen to shift you from where you are to where you see yourself. And so yesterday we kind of we started on this on Sunday, and I want to continue all the week. And kind of Tramika actually last week kind of tipped me to this and it really pricked something in my spirit because she made the statement, the meantime is dream time. And uh, I, when she said that, it just, mm, just it got to me. And I began to ask the Lord, you know, what do we do in the meantime? What is the meantime? In? And so let's go, with, uh, to, if you can go to the scripture with me from Isaiah chapter 40, if you can hold that scripture, Isaiah chapter uh, 40. And at the same time, if you can go to Mark chapter 4. So we're going to be from Isaiah 40 and Mark 4. And both of those scriptures I absolutely love. And uh, let's 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 begin. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna begin at the uh, twenty seventh verse of, of Isaiah, of chapter forty. And it says, "Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known? 
Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak, and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And here it is um, in, in Isaiah 40, the children of Israel. They, they, you know, Isaiah is talking about the children of Israel and how the children of Israel. They, they. Why, why he's saying he's saying to them, you know, why are you saying my way is hidden from the Lord? Why are you saying that he's passed over me? That he that he doesn't see. In verse 27, he they're saying, you know, he said, Oh Israel, why are you saying that? Why do you think that what you're going through, God can't see? Why do you you think that what you're going through, that God, that God is, that He won't hear you, He don't see you, that He doesn't care. Why do you feel like that? And then He asked them a question that's rhetorical. He said, "Have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting, God, everlasting God, that he, the, the Creator of all heaven and earth, that He neither faints nor is weary?" And so He asked them a question, but He already knows the answer. Haven't you heard? Don't you know? You know, there are many times when we're going through transition, we're going to the me through the meantime the time of change, that you got to make sure you know what you know, and you got to make sure you you remember what you heard. you got to remember the, what you know and what you heard, because when you think about the fact, the experiences that you already have with God, I know last week we talked about overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, when we remember what the Lord has done. When we go back and reflect on his faithfulness and how he always came through, then we begin to look at our situation and say, God, if He if you did it then, you're going to do it again. If you help me from that test, then, Father, you're going to help me with this, this one. It doesn't matter where we find ourselves. The bottom line is God does not change. He said, you know, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he is the same, he is consistent, we need to depend upon his faithfulness and consistency because God is faithful even when we are not, if the truth be told. Even when I fall, even when I falter, even when I mess up, God is still on the throne. He's still consistent. He doesn't get off because I get off. He doesn't get off he doesn't get off his throne because I get off my journey, off my path. He stays the same. He is the same. He stays the same. And so uh Israel uh, Israel right there, you know, they begin to question, you know, what does he see, does he hear, does he care? You know, and what have you, and, 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 and the answer comes back in the form of a question. Now, you know, maybe God is asking us that question today. Have you not known? Have you heard? Some things we haven't experienced, but we've heard about what he's done. That's why testimonies are so important. Some things, you know, you got to hear from somebody else. You know, I love to hear testimonies because when I hear about what God has done for somebody else, how God has delivered somebody else financially, then if I'm going through a financial thing, I begin to say, Lord, I heard that you did such and such, and I know what you did for this one, and I know you did for that one. And I begin to do, like I told you, what I be call a roll call, and begin to remind God, begin, begin to remind myself of all that God has done and all of that, that he's done, not just for me but for other people. And so we ask Israel, haven't you known, don't you, haven't you heard that, you know, that he neither faints nor is weary? Thank God, he doesn't get tired. He ain't about to pass out. He's not stressing out. He doesn't toil, nor is he weary. He gives power to the weak, and he and to those who have no might, he increases strength. So, in other words, because he is all-powerful, guess what? He's going to give you power, because power belongs to God. And so when you think about the everlasting Father and how wonderful he is, and you find yourself in the meantime, what happens is you begin to pull on him, what you know about him, and you become to get empowered, because when you, when, when, when you begin to pray, him, the very attribute of him shows up. If you begin to praise him as a healer, healing is yours. If you begin to praise him as, as a deliverer, deliverance is yours. Why? Because praise is the language of your faith. You have faith, but open up your mouth and begin to bless him for what for who you know he is. You know, when my daughter says mama, the reason that she can say mama, 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 and guess what? It doesn't, it, it, makes, it makes my ear feel good, and I love when she calls me mama because of the fact that I am her mother, and because of who I am in her life, I do the things that I do. When we begin to call him our Heavenly Father, our Daddy, because 
he is who he is, a provider, a keeper, a sustainer, a healer, a deliverer. When we begin to call him who he is, the very presence of him shows up and begins to show out in our lives. And that's exciting. In the meantime, we got to get to that position. And I, I'm going to keep going, and I know we're going to be on it all week, so I can't get it all out in a day. But, I, but I, let's jump down to verse 30. He says, but those that wait on the Lord. And when I really looked up this word, of course, I'm a worshiper, and I know one of the words that for worship is wait. Uh, you know, the, you know, waiting it could be worshiping or what have you. But in this particular situation, the root of that particular wait in the Bible, it it is the word. It's a it means rope, rope. So 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 it it comes from the root word meaning rope, R O P E. And so basically, what the what the with what Isaiah is saying here, but those that wait on the Lord, those that bind themselves with the rope, those that hold on to the Lord by rope, those those that wait upon the Lord, those that hold on by faith. You know, faith ain't faith until it's the only thing that you're holding on to. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Renewal is a process. Renewal, you know, renew your, renewing your mind is a process. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. What got me really excited about this is because I began to think not just about this scripture, but about a scripture in Mark chapter four. And I remember, and if you, and then those Bible scholars, y'all remember that 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 with the the disciples were in a boat. In Mark chapter four, it says this. It says. On verse 35, Mark chapter 4, it says, On the same day when the evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. This is Jesus speaking. Now, when the multitudes had left, when, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as, as he was, and the other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves began to beat the boat, so that it was already feeling. But when he was in the stern asleep on a the pillow, they awoke him and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said once another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Listen, you and I both go through storms and situations, and you may be in a situation right now. You may be in a situation where you say, you know, all of the storm is is, is shaking my boat, is moving my boat. The wind, and Jesus seems like he 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 he's asleep. He's asleep. Maybe he's he's asleep. Maybe he don't care. Maybe you feeling like God is not you're not listening. That God doesn't know what's going on. But let me tell you, I don't care what's shaking your boat. I don't care what's what's blowing at your blowing the wind that's blowing and, and making you rock and ro- making you roll and making you may feel a little unstable, a little off balance. It doesn't matter. It does not matter because God neither faints nor is weary. Jesus wasn't worried. That's why he could rest in the midst of a storm. He knew what was going on. He's omnipresent and he's omniscient. He's al- he already knows what's going on. God already knows what's going on in our life. But we got to do. Like Isaiah, Isaiah said, we got to hold on. We got to hold on. We got to wait on the Lord. We got to hold on to the rope of that faith. We got to bind ourselves up with that rope. Hold on to the Lord. And then we're going to renew our strength in the midst, in the meantime. Though we're in the midst, though we know we're going to the other side, sometimes it's the stuff in between that gets us all tripped up and all knocked off course and all off balance. But I'm telling you, whatever you believe in God for, you may be on one side. You may even feel like you're in the middle of the water. You You may even feel like you're going to drown. I know that feeling. I know that feeling. You may feel like it, but let me tell you, the one that made the water is on the boat with you. The one, the one that made the the one that made the 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 the, the one that made your very the very ship you on is on the ship with you, and for that reason. You're going to have to renew your mind. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You got strength, but you need it to be renewed. It's already in you. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. In other words, you're going to soar. You're going to run and not get weary. You're going to walk and not faint. You know what the Lord showed me? It doesn't matter. If you look at if you look at, look at Isaiah, if you look back at Isaiah, he talked about soaring, running, and walking, all of those are forward progressions. It said nothing about waiting and not moving. No, you, while you're waiting, you're going to be moving, moving towards your peace, 
moving towards your destiny. You might have to fly to get there, and if you can't fly, you might have to run. And if you can't run, you might have to walk. You know what? I'm going to take it a little further. If you can't walk, you might have to crawl. You might have to scoot. It doesn't matter. But guess what? I promise you, you're going to get to where God called you to be. Because in the meantime, the meantime is a time where you get to know the voice of your God a little bit better. And you begin to realize how faithful he is, even in the midst of a storm. He can speak to the wind and waves in your life and make them behave and tell them to stop, peace be still. But he wants us to believe. So I pray today that if you're in the meantime, that you stick with us all week, because I promise you tomorrow I'm going to give you three things to do in the meantime. Because guess what? We all have transition. We all have change. And it's going to require something of us. But if you know like I know, that your God is faithful even when the stuff even even when you're stuck in between. God is faithful. In fact, I'm gonna take that word stuck back because you're not stuck. You remember you're moving forward. You gotta fly there, you gotta run there, you walk there, scoot there. But I promise you will get there. Father, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus for your faithfulness. I thank you for those who are on the line. I thank you, Lord, that you, God, are the one who comes and calms every sea, every turmoil in our lives. I ask you right now, Father, to for those who are hearing the sound of my voice, that, Father, that you will speak to the wind and waves in their lives and you will make them behave. But more than anything, God, let them know why they're in the midst of the meanwhile, why they're in the stuff in between. I pray right now, Father, that they will remember you. They will remember what they know, and they will remember what they heard, that they may be able to speak out of their mouths what is necessary to help and sustain them in the midst of where they are right now. I thank you right now for your faithfulness for this line. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that there's no distance in this prayer. And I thank you, Lord, Father, that we are all going to share this word with others because, God, you are the God of not just sometimes, but you're God all the time, and you're even God in the meantime. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. We decree and declare it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you want to invite somebody to call back, the call back line is 530-881-1399. That's 530-881-1399. The access code is 771 Pound. Again, the access code is seven seven one six eight five pound. I absolutely love you. I love spending time with you. Again, this is Tara Alexander. If you want to get in touch with me, go to Champion Church Nola. That's Champion Church N O L A. Champion Church Nola dot com. God bless you. You have a wonderful and exciting day. Bless you.